So Paul from the Netherlands sent me this question. How many people in total are needed to operate, maintain, support one tank, including fuel, spare parts, etc.? In other words, how many people are not needed after 500 smashed tanks? Well, the answer to that can be found in the T3R or tooth to tail ratio. So this is the number of direct combat troops or teeth compared with the logistical troops or tail. The tooth to tail ratio gives you a rough idea of the logistical and expeditionary capabilities of a unit. Back during the American Civil War, the tooth to tail ratio was 37 to 1. That meant 37 combat soldiers for one support soldier. This varied on the type of unit. Infantry men needed fewer support soldiers. Artillery men needed uh, blacksmiths and farriers and carpenters. World War I brought the tooth to tail ratio down for the U.S. Army. Now the tooth to tail ratio is 4 to 1, meaning four combat soldiers for every support soldier. This made a lot of sense because we had to move an entire army across an ocean. And that's a heck of a logistical feat. We also had machine guns. We had vehicles. We had radios. You need a lot more technical professionals to manage and maintain that equipment. By World War II, that ratio went down even further to 1.1 to 1. Remember, this was a logistical train that stretched from France or Okinawa all the way back to the United States. Now, America's conflict in Vietnam saw something really special happen. The tooth to tail ratio got flipped on its head. For the first time, you had more support soldiers than you had combat soldiers. And that number is either 1 to 4, 1 to 10, or 1 to 11, depending on the source. So now, for every soldier out fighting the Viet Cong, you had 11 soldiers making sure that soldier had batteries, medical care, their helicopter was taken care of. The post-Vietnam War period was really bloated, and the Army spent some time cutting those numbers of support personnel down. By the time the Gulf War rolled around, now the ratio was 1 to 1.3. The second Gulf War, the war in Iraq, or Operation Iraqi Freedom, saw that number change again. Now it was 1 to 2.5. So one combat soldier for every 2.5 support soldiers. And that made a lot of sense because we were hunting IEDs. We were trying to build a nation. We were trying to restore infrastructure. We were trying to uh, operate drones. And that number does not include all the support contractors who helped out. And today, America's tooth to tail is probably about one to five. Only 17% of U.S. units actually are designed to fight in combat. Everything else is support. So now let's talk about the tooth to tail of the Russian army. And that's a little bit hard. I had to take the structure of a Russian brigade, and then I had to do a little math. And that got me to a ratio of one combat soldier for every 1.1 support soldiers. Now, why is that? Well, it's because the Russians have a lot of teeth in their brigades. Now, before I go down this path, I just want you to know, if you're not military, a brigade is roughly 5,000 or so soldiers, and usually there's a number of battalions inside that brigade. And those battalions are anywhere between 400 to 800 soldiers, depending on the kind of battalion. If you're outside of the U.S., sometimes brigades are known as regiments. There's a little bit of crossover there. Don't worry about all that. Just know that there's several battalions inside of a brigade. So this is what an American armored brigade combat team looks like if you were to chart it out. And as you can see, there's one, two support battalions, and then one, two, three, four, five combat battalions. Now, Russian brigades are a little bit different. Check this out. They have one, two, three support battalions, and then they have two air defense battalions, and two artillery battalions, one of regular artillery, one of rockets. And they also have to support the one, two, three, four battalions of combat troops. So does taking out one tank mean that the support personnel have to work less? Not really, because they're probably working their butts off now. There's just not enough of them. So the one to 1.1 ratio of tooth to tail, does that mean if you lose 500 tanks, then 550 support soldiers aren't needed anymore? Not really, because you just lost 500 tanks. You're probably desperate and plugging gaps anywhere with any personnel you can find. So odds are, if those 550 support personnel aren't supporting the mission, they're going to be used to do things like guard supply lines or perform tower guard or even be plugged directly into combat because they need the bodies. So I don't know if I can break this down into an exact number of people that are needed to support one tank, but I think I can say with confidence that for every three tankers, 
you need 3.3 people supporting those soldiers. Hope that works as an explanation. And if you have a topic you'd like me to cover, reach out to me on Twitter or leave a message on the first pinned comment. Thank you so much for watching.